Hey everyone, Wentz Bitten here with a battle report. So this is a very, very special battle report. It's a game between me and Chai Hammer. If you're unfamiliar with him, you've got to go check out his channel. He's got a blog on the Ninth Age website, but I think he's like me and really all he does is he references his channel, but subscribe to both. So um, he came to he came to town for the Brawler Bash tournament, and he was staying in my house. So we, we got to spend a fair amount of time together. He's a great guy. His Orc and Goblin army is absolutely beautiful. Um, so this game we're playing is the night before the tournament. We wanted to make sure that we were able to get a game in together. It turned out to be a fantastic game. Uh, spoiler there, it's a good one. 2,500 points. I don't think we're playing any scenarios in this. We just wanted to, to throw some models together and, and roll some dice. Uh, we're playing not with the most recent rules. We're playing one version back because that's what the tournament was doing and he didn't, you know, he had his list put together. So deployment, starting on the far left, he's got a Git Launcher, an Orc Shaman rocking the Lore of Wilderness, uh, a Splatter, which is a stone door basically, another Git Launcher. He's got a unit of Orcs with crossbows and attached to them he has a Goblin Shaman level 2 Shadow. Let's see. He's got his general, which is an orc warlord on a wyvern. Uh, let's see, back there behind, he's got a gargantula. In front, he's got some uh, goblins with bows and poison. A big unit of orc ed bashers. I, they toned him down, I've heard, in this latest edition, but these guys are the, you know, they're strength five until they lose combat. He's got a goblin chief. There in front, he's got his battle standard bear. I, I hope you can see the detail on these things. This is just fantastic. Goblin raiders. Um, then he's got, this is kind of, you know, farther to the right away from everything else. He's got Goblin King on a Huntsman Spider. and He calls this guy Koopa. I call him Chupa, um, which I believe is Spanish for suck. This guy's just, he's been a, like kind of a most valuable player in Chai Hammer's, uh, in a lot of his, um, a lot of his games. Very, very cool looking model. So this is my ambushing stuff. I've got two units of mongrels. Both have a banner so they can score objective points. I've got a briar beast who, who uh, ambushes out of the woods uh, on any turn um, without needing to roll. So you just need space in the woods to be able to do it. Then I've got a centaur hero. He'll be ambushing and he has the impaler. So it's a lance, but it's also a, a bolt thrower that has no modifications to hit. So if he's short range, he hits on a three up, which I forgot about that. I was playing another four up all game, but whatever. And that's been toned down. Now you can bring the item, but you can't ambush with it, which I think is fair. I think it's, I think it's pretty broken to be able to ambush with a mobile bolt thrower that suffers no penalties to hit and can line up a, a flank shot whenever he wants. So my deployment on the right, I've got a vanguarding giant. I've got a um, uh, that razor gore is not a razor gore. It's it's uh, a razor tusk. Um, I said the Razor Gore, oh my gosh. The Dragon Ogre model is a Razor Tusk. I've got my second Beastman Giant. Behind it is the Gore Attack. Uh, then I've got a unit of Minotaurs. Uh, these things, they have the the, uh, the Speed Banner, which, uh, which the Speed Totem, I mean, not the Speed Banner. Extra Hand Weapon. Got it as a Raiding Chariot, then a big unit of Wild Hordes. Pretty sure these guys have Extra Hand Weapon. I've got three characters in that unit. If you look at the front row right, I've got my Battle Standard Bearer. He's got like a three up armor save. He has the beast banner, uh, which gives, uh, in the current edition that we're playing with, gives everybody in the unit plus one strength. Next to him is my general. So he's a beast lord. He's got the, um, I forget his full kit, if we're being honest, but he's got a, a, a re rollable two up armor save. He's got the eye of dominance, so monsters and stuff can't hit him except on sixes, uh, which I like. Um, and then the far left front is, or um, I think it might be in the second rank because I have full command, is my level two lore of death with a dispel scroll. Behind the house is my Jabberwock. Then I've got my second Briar Beast. This one I decided just to deploy as normal. And then way over here I've got my second, not really a Dragon Ogre, actually a Razor, razor Tusk. So we get to Vanguard. And it looks like that. I take my giants up just a little bit. I don't want uh, Koopa Troopa to be able to charge my giants too easily. My, you know, Shyhammer's telling me he's, he's, he's fairly nasty in combat. And um, I'm thinking, I don't know. My giants, giants are just wonky. They can do really well or, or really poorly. 
So, um, I think that I deployed everything first. I think, if memory serves. Anyway, so my opponent gets to go first, and he does this stuff. So first thing, he takes his fast cav. He takes a Koopa Troopa way out to the right, uh, trying to get around my flank. Uh, my giant can't charge him, so that's, you know, pretty good deployment there. He takes his fast cav directly in front of my minotaurs. Now, because I, it may be hard to see later, I want to... No, excuse me. I want to talk now about what happened. So, if you remember, my Jabberwock is is on the left. So he charges him, forcing a terror test. And oh my gosh, I hope that thing causes terror. If I'm wrong, please let me know. <laughs> I'm in a, like oh crap moment right now. Um, forcing a terror test, and they fail it, and they flee, and they flee through my giant and lose three models and get out of the way. My Minotaurs can go on their merry way. Um, I wasn't too worried about my Minotaurs just charging them and overrunning and just kind of being there. It's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. My opponent liked that idea because it gave him an extra turn of shooting. Speaking of shooting, his... Um, I know this is magic. He has this, this spell. It does like uh, a bunch of D6 strength one hits, and that's all it took to, to kill this guy. And his... one of his, He had a lot of... He had a lot of ranged weapons. He had the two get launchers and the... Uh, and the other thing, and between them all, he just does a couple wounds to a chariot, and I think that's it. Um, so I felt very, very fortunate in the shooting phase. So we go to Beast Turns turn one. Uh, like I said, we had those charges on the fast calf. So you see, look at the top right, middle right. Um, he has two remaining fast calves sitting there. Otherwise, my things move up fairly aggressively. I have my Gortak positioned so that if, if a Koopa Troopa wants to charge him, He's welcome to. I think the Gortak will make short work of him. If he charges a giant, I think my giant will survive and be stubborn, and then I can countercharge with the Gortak. So I think I'm not too worried about that, that character where he is. Meanwhile, yeah, there's the, the fast cav. <clears throat> Meanwhile, one unit of mongrels uh, is able to ambush. The other one does, is not. And so this one comes on uh, with an easy charge reach of one of his war machines. Um, the Centaur hero comes on like we can see him. So he's going to shoot. I, I'm pretty sure he shoots at the, the Orc Warlord and just misses. And when the Briar Beast comes on, right in front of this poison unit. So, you know, really they should just shoot at this guy with poison and kill him. And I'm not, I'm just really not that worried about it. They're shooting at him, they're not shooting at my Minotaurs. And um, I think that's just a, a price I'm willing to pay. So we go to Orcs and Goblins turn to. And overall, it looks like this. Uh, in in the front page news, Koopa tries to charge the flank of my giant, and he fails. So um, his fast cav rally, I think. I can't see from my angle if they're facing towards me or away, but I think they rally and, and just kind of move up to where you can see them. Um, yeah, so with with Koopa failing his charge, that means that Gortak can charge him. So with the extra impact hits, that's always a good thing. Uh, orc warlord tried to or war boss whatever tried to charge this briar beast and he failed i was very happy about that because he got into combat he was going to just destroy this thing and then just reform and be facing my flank and um now when they failed it it actually forces a tough decision on me because my centaur hero can either charge a war machine or he can not charge and shoot at this guy again now he's got a four up board save of course uh, so I've got, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking it takes a four to hit him, and then he's going to save it on a four. Uh, so only 25% chance, but still something worth considering. He moves his um, this guy around, and I, he, because he was going to shoot, I think he's got a, just a range weapon. I don't think I made a mistake, and this guy's a spellcaster. I think he has a range weapon to shoot at my centaur hero. And he moves this shaman around over here. Um... So he can, uh, I think, do some magic at, at my mongrels, and if, if nothing else, he can charge them. I'm just really hoping I don't have his characters mixed up. Anyway, so go to shooting, and he easily picks off the rest of the chariot. He uh, kills just a few of these guys, and overall, I feel pretty lucky that the shooting isn't doing too much. We go to Beast Herd's turn, too. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot of funny things happened here. Funny as in, yeah. Good and bad both ways. So Gortak charges Koopa, and he fails his terror test and runs. <laughs> that was perfect for me as far as I'm concerned. He keeps the Gortak 
kind of away from the main action, which I don't love. But um, I don't know. I kind of like Koopa being just way uh, far away from everything. Uh, I think I, I redirect and charge his fast cab, and they either fail their terror test or they elect to flee. Either way, it looks like that. And I charged. One of two things happened. Either I had the the speed totem up on the Minotaurs, and I thought the Minotaurs and the Giant would combo this unit, um, and the Minotaurs failed, or it was such a long charge for the Giant that I just wanted to force a terror test on him, and um, and then he made the combat. One like that. I did, I did not want this guy to be in combat against all these Strength 5 hits, <laughs> but, but, but there you have it. So... Yeah, the Briar Beast, um, yeah, I forgot to show that. So my opponent shot at him with all that poison and only did two wounds to him. So he's got a few left. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to charge them because they. I, I think they could still um, do a stand shoot reaction regardless of me being so close. So I just decided to do a rear charge on this guy that had turned to face my Centaur character. He missed a shot and then gave me a rear charge. So anything could happen here, but I like my odds. Uh, the mongrels charge uh, one of the git launchers. Uh, the central hero, like I said, I, I you know only twenty five percent chance of actually getting past of hitting and getting past the ward save on the work warlord. Um, so they just charge the other git launcher. Those things are so accurate. Go to combat and giant does nothing. I mean, I think we're striking Simo at, at initiative three. Um, his BSB may have stri stricken first, but he didn't kill him. So anyway. Yeah, giant rolls, whatever he rolls. I think I kill two guys, and he just gets destroyed. <laughs> I wish I'd taken notes on how he got in there alone. I, uh, ugh. Mongrels go in and do a single wound, and this guy does not break. I, darn it, that would have been nice. Um, overrun potentially into the other war machine, tying it up so it couldn't shoot, but the mongrels just decided to suck. And yeah, this guy... Um, just I think he just kills him. So way to go, Briar Beast. Now this he's going to get charged by this unit of Nashers, and they're going to just I mean they're strength five as well. There's a lot of strength five in this army, by the way, and so they're going to kill him. So that Orcs and Goblins turn three. Um, scary. Oh my. Uh, this is not good. This is not good, guys. So let's see. Koopa rallies the fast cab. Do not. Okay. So. In scary news, he decided to take his his um, his general into the flank of my big unit. Now I've got the um, plus one attack and armor piercing two thing up, so that's helpful. He takes his gargantula into the front of this unit, and he charges his Ed Bashers into it as well, and they fail the charge. Thank goodness. They, they had a lot of options. They could have charged a giant and... Because I, I wasn't I was sober, I could have fled, and I would, didn't want to flee, but it would have been really tempting to, because they probably would have made that charge, and they, they easily, if they did, would have killed him. Uh, so going in here, you know, it would have pushed the Gargantula over to the left and got, got all his attacks in. I would have gone first, but I don't think I would have done enough to matter. It just would have been really bad. He failed it. Thank you very much. This is still pretty scary. Um, but, but, you know, he's going to kill a bunch of bodies. I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be steadfast. Yeah, he, the Nashers charge the Briar Beast, and yeah, that's a foregone conclusion. And over here, um, I think this guy must be frenzied for some reason. I don't understand what he has that causes that, but he failed his frenzy test and, and had to charge the Mongols. So we go to combat. Um, I issue a challenge with the champion, knowing that his general would have to attack. I was really tempted to take my general against him because... Um, two up a rollable armor save. I wasn't too worried about the wyvern stomps. Uh, the wyvern was only going to be hitting me on sixes, so I wasn't worried about that. And just overall, I thought I'd be okay. Um, I've got an extra attack up, re-rolling re to hit, strength five, uh, armor piercing four. Um, I like my chances there. But I'm like, screw it. Let's put the champion in this guy, and let's have my general see what damage we can do to the gargantula, because my general can do a lot, um, and the rest of my guys might be able just to finish him off. So we go to the challenge, and 
He kills this guy, easily gets three overkill. I think you can stomp after the, your, the guy's dead in a challenge, somebody told me, and it doesn't matter. So he kills him, he gets four wounds total. My general opens up with a gargantula and just slaps him. Just, oh, it was awesome. He, uh, I think the gargantula showed up with one wound, and by the time my general was done with him, he was down to one wound, one wound remaining, um, which was nice. That guy picks on, I think he picks on my battle standard bearer, and and doesn't do anything to him, and then we just kill him. So with all that, we actually win combat. I, I was surprised. I thought that I was easily going to lose and going to stick. Now, during the magic phase, he got a spell off on my unit that if I uh, charge or pursue or anything like that, I've got to take dangerous terrain, and we fail in a one or a two. I'm going to lose a third of the unit. So that, for a couple reasons, I was deliberating, like, do I really want to lose sacrifice a third of this unit to try to get the points when I don't have swift stride and my opponent does. And then I looked up and I saw that Briar Beast. Look at the top left. The Briar Beast facing the wrong way, but it doesn't matter because he's random movement and he's so close to his general that's going to be easy points. So I decide just to reform. And then I promptly forget that I have that spell off on me. So, yeah, so I got points for Gargantula and I'm going to get the, the, his general on that wyvern, and that's going to be nice. Uh, over here, the uh, so the one difference uh, for those who used to play um, Warhammer Eighth Edition and, and then the Ninth Edition, one difference is I my understanding is when if you're fighting with the war machine and somebody charges you, you can still have people go into the war machine and uh, you know people fight the other guy. So we were fighting all the way around. We killed the war machine. Uh, so then when we're done, we reform and face this guy. So I'm pretty happy. I mean, this guy I think is still going to be the mall girls because they suck. Um, and I didn't get the other war machine, but at least this much is going on. All right. So we go to beast herds turn three. I declare just a bunch of charges into his Ed bashers. And I forgot about these guys. So these guys had to take dangerous terrain. I lose about a third of the unit and then they fail their charge. Oh, you suck. You suck so bad. So not only did I sacrifice a third of the unit for nothing, now with the failed charge, his Nashers get a free flank charge into this unit. <laughs> God bless. Darn it. That could not have gone worse. If I hadn't declared the charge, uh, 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 oh, that sucks. Uh, that was a weird video thing. I don't know what happened there. Sorry. Um, oh, you suck. Uh, all right. So that's just the declare. I'm just, okay, I'm done. I'm done. So overall, um, let's see. This is what's going on, on the left. The Briar Beast charges his general. He can't declare a reaction because it's random movement, and we get all those points. The uh, Minotaurs and a Giant make it to his Ed Bashers. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I get to swing first because we're initiative fourth with um, extra hand weapons. And Minotaurs, I mean, they're, they're base three, they have extra hand weapon four, they're frenzied, five attacks each. Leadership is nearby, so they're going to be re-rolling to hit, wounding on threes. They're going to make a mess of that unit, no doubt about it. Uh, I moved the, the Jabberwock close so that the, uh, the Edbashers will be minus one on their leadership. And they still have to take, I think, they have to, unless they're Mutocycle, I just don't remember, but there's a chance they have to take a fear test. So, yeah, looking like that. There's all that going on. There's that. That's going to be bloody. That's going to be bloody all the way around. Because if I don't absolutely make a mess of that unit, they've got a lot of attacks, strength five coming back. I'm a little bit nervous about it, to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm just still happy about his general being dead. All right, so we go to the fighting. And I decide to declare, somehow I forget how we um, issue challenges. We get a challenge. <coughs> Excuse me with um, a Minotaur Champion and his Battle Standard Bearer. And I invite James to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think my champion just slaps this guy. Just, I mean, he's base four, so he's got six attacks, re-rolling to hit, strength five. Um, yeah, I, and I got to go for it. I think I have the speed totem up on these guys. So, this, so my guys, instead of the, striking initiative seven, I think I just, just slap them. And then the Minotaur, <laughs> look at that, Minotaurs open up, they're like, whatever, and they just slap them around. I'm losing, I think I took, I think I took seven wounds, 
maybe less because I might have had some shooting wounds on my guys. They just tore him up. Tore him up. There was no break test needed. Yeah, look at the left. My champion did kill that battle standard bearer. Just, yeah. Whew. So the Minotaurs have to overrun. I decided to go ahead and chase with my race tusks to just to make sure that if they didn't go off the table, I got the points. The giant reformed. So I've got a giant, a Jabberwock, and a Gortak. I've got my stupid unit that failed to charge. I was, oh man. Had I known then what I know now, knowing they were not necessary for the fight, I could have reformed, taken a frontal charge by those Nashers. Um, no matter what happened, I probably would have been steadfast and everything's different. But nope, nope, nope. We go to Orcs and Goblins, turn four. He gets that flank charge in. I'm telling you, my friends, those things are nasty. I don't know if they got toned down or not in the latest edition, but ah, uh, no bueno. Uh, somehow, some way, his um, I want to say his uh, his crossbow orcs fled something. I think something died, and they and they panicked. And on his turn, they rallied, and he's able to to reform him such that my uh, centaur character cannot charge the war machine. He's got to charge them. He takes his spellcaster lore shadow out, so you can see him in the top left. Uh, yeah, he he lays waste to that unit. He just... I had a few guys left, but not many. And there was no break test needed. Um, and so my BSB, my general, and the spellcaster, and a couple guys were still left. They broke, and he caught me and overran into the Gortex. So this one, I'm... I think the Gortex has survived this, because, you know, this frontage is small enough that these guys aren't going to get too many hits on him. And again, every 60 rolls to wound... He's getting back a wound. So I think he might actually be okay here. Um, I have other monsters that can support, but I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to support with them. I think there's just too many high strength attacks coming at him. So Beast Herds turn four. I didn't know a rule. Anyway, we'll get to that later. So I take the Giant and the Jabberwock. I go right over that unit. I'm like, Gortak, I'm going to trust you to handle your own. I, I turn the Minotaurs around to help out just in case the Gortak needs it. Um, so I, I'm expecting the Gortak just to stick around and let them long enough for the Minotaurs to come in and wipe wipe everything clean. Here in the top left, the let's go back one. The Centaur Hero charges um, that unit of orc crossbows. Uh, I'm toughness five. I'm strength six on the charge. Um, I'm confident. I mean, my opponent's going to have what a banner and a rank. I'm going to have a charge. I'm confident. I'm going to win by at least one or two, my opponent's going to be steadfast. He was, the leadership sucks. Um, my character overruns into the war machine, which is nice. We go to combat and carnage everywhere. <laughs> oh my. So they come into the Gortek and they do, well, looks like they did four wounds to him. He has, I believe, six wounds. And he just starts ripping into him. And then he's got Thunderstomp and he's just crushing things left and right. I don't know if they did more wounds and he got back. I don't think so. I don't think he rolled any sixes. If he'd rolled a six or two, he would have had some more wounds left. So he wins combat, and these things explode. And so every unit within however many inches takes a boatload of hits, and the blowing up kills my Gortak by one. Like if I'd rolled a couple sixes, anyway, blows up my giant, wounds my Jabberwock, if, had I known they blew up, I would have positioned my monsters differently. I, just, I didn't know they did that. I, maybe I should have. So, yeah, there's a big blast in the middle of the table. We go to Orcs and Goblins turn five. And I thought at this point it's just going to be, let's just dance away from each other. He's got a single character in the top left. He's got Koopa. And what? 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 Are you kidding me? Koopa Chupa comes charging into the Minotaurs. I'm like, are you are you crazy? This guy's got a two up armor save. I care not, my friend. My Minotaurs have five attacks each, plus the back ranks. So that's what 15, 16, 17, 19 attacks, I think. If I pass primal primal instinct, they're rerolling hit. They are strength five. Your two up goes to four up. They are going to smash him. Well, of course, we go to the magic phase, and my my opponent plays a very good magic phase. He gets my Minotaurs down to where their weapon skill one. So I'm not. I'm hitting them on fives, and I fail the primal fury. So um, he comes in first. He does a bunch of wounds. I slap everything I can back at him, and 
I do one wound. He wins. I'm steadfast. And they run out the table. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? There's no way. Oh my gosh. You, uh, uh. Meanwhile, his stupid shadow mage is like moving around and then using the shadow attribute to jump out of line of sight. I can't get line of sight at him. My center hero is shooting at him with no modifiers to hit. He can't hit crap all game long. We go to Beast Hurts turn five. It's just me staying away from Chupa and trying to get the stupid shadow mage, and I can't because he's just out and moving around, and I can't position with a damn. It looks like that. We go to Beast Hurts turn six. It's all I care about is my centaur hero getting that shot off on his character and staying away from Koopa. And we finally get him. Thank you very much. I could have been shooting at Chupa. I, I deserved some payback there, but he's got a ward save. I figured I wasn't going to do anything. And we end the game, and we've got Koopa sitting there, the most valuable player for the other side, thumbing his, mo his nose at my army. At this, I thought I had it all wrapped up. And man, he got my wild horns and my three characters. That was a huge point swing. So, what? I've got a monster. I've got some chaff. I've got one character left. Um, you know, so it's a win for the beast herds, but but not a very big one. Fantastic game. This is a great guy. A beautifully painted army. Again, if you're not familiar with his channel, he's a Chihammer on YouTube, and he is. Um, War Boss Tooth on the Ninth Age. Uh, highly, highly recommend uh, you give his, his, his uh, channel a look. Anyway, that's it. Here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. As you know, YouTube has a variety of functions you can use to interact with videos such as this. You can like or comment on the video. You can favorite it. You can share it. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel. And I encourage you to do any or all of those things as uh, a way of interacting between viewer and producer. Uh, as always, I'm, I appreciate your patronage on the channel and wish you all the best.